So by the sweet will of our Guru Dev, we will read in Chaitanya Charitamrita. More precise, we will read quotes from Chaitanya Charitamrita in Sri Sri Vilap Kusumanjali. And last time, we ended with verse number 59 and we couldn't read it totally. So we will start here again. Verse 59 and the quotes from Chaitanya Charitamrita. And we will start actually with a normal feeling in the spiritual world with the most normal feeling in the spiritual world, with ecstasy. It's great ecstasy. Swamini goes to Krishna to make him happy with her service. The nature of Brahma is that it just wants to make Krishna happy. Sri Jiva Goswami has described three crowns to Brahma. Vishaya Anukul Yatmakas Tat Anukul Yanugata Tat Spriha Tat Anubhava Hetu Kola Samaya Kyana Vishesha Priyata. This is from Priti Sandarbha 61.1. And it's the, it describes the nature of Priti. So the soul of Priti is the desire to make Krishna happy or to be favorable to his happiness. The second point, the arising of different desires in the lover for the sake of Krishna's happiness. And the third part, when Krishna is happy, the lover is also happy. So the first of these, the soul of Priti is the desire to make Krishna happy or to be favorable to his happiness. This one, the first, is the constitutional hallmark, Swarup Lakshana, of Prema. And the other two, are the marginal hallmarks Tatashta Lakshana, the extraordinary constitutional position of Brahma is the exclusive aim to make its object happy. The desires arise in the heart of the loving devotee to make Krishna happy with different devotional services that please him and that help the devotee to attain him. The awareness that Krishna is happy gives the devotee boundless bliss. Although he does not have this, his desires for personal happiness fulfilled. So you are all invited to share on that topic what you understand or what you feel about this. So,
The awareness that Krishna is happy gives the devotee boundless bliss, although he does not have this desire for personal happiness. We can easily understand that if we want to please someone because we love this person, then we are not interested in our action that we will have bliss, that our desires will be fulfilled. Because if we really act out of this high feeling of love, selfless, that means we want to see the other person happy and this is our happiness. What doesn't mean that we are doing this for our happiness. We want to see the other person happy. And this is the quote of Chaitanya Charit Amrita Adi Lila 199-200. Priti Vishayananda Tat Ashrayananda Tahana Hinicha Sukha Vanchara Sambanda Nirubhati Bremayaha Taha Eriti Priti Vishaya Sukhe Ashrayera Priti the happiness of the abode of love is the happiness of the object of that love. This is not a relationship of desire for personal happiness. It is one of causeless love. The reservoir of love becomes happy when the object of love is happy. Chaitanya Charit Amrita Adilila 4 199-200 So here was the quote and this is actually a very very nice description. Why actually we are inspired to act. We are inspired to serve. It is not a duty. It is not like in the material world. Oh yes, we have a contract, we have to do something and then we get something for it. It's not of that character. We can say everything here in this world has two sides because we are living in the world of duality. So there's for our um, point of view, there's a good side and there's a bad side. So we would say the good side is that I get something and the bad side is that I have to give. <laughs> But a lover doesn't count like that. A lover wants to give and give and give and give and give. And the only thing he really wants is to see that the person he's giving to is happy with that. That's the nature of pure love. You want to give and give and give and give and just see that the other person is happy. Otherwise, you would give something else to make the person happy. It's not that you look, oh, is he happy so that I can also be happy? No, not even that. That's a very sensitive point, actually. I'm not even looking that I'm satisfied because I could satisfy this person. No, that's a side effect. I'm not out for that. 
I'm just out for the happiness of this person. And I'm so happy when I see that the person is happy. And if my service would fail, I would change my service and not lament. I would just try to make it better. And even though the other one is the other person is happy, even then I try to make it better. I always try to make it more and more nice for the other person. That's love. And this is just natural. And it's installed in our heart. Nitya Sita Krishna Prema Satya Kagunoi Shravanadi Shuddha Chitte Koroye Udoi. It's there installed already. This is our nature to serve. Just serve. Not asking for anything. Like a small child who has no experience, that if it does serve in law, that something will come back. There's no experience that something will come back. So you don't do it because of that. And in the spiritual world, everything is new and fresh in every moment. So you have no experience. You just serve out of love. There's no expectation at all. And from that nature, the pure heart is... This heart of a devotee just wants to serve. So what to speak of Swamini's heart? Swamini Ji is the head of every person who serve in love. She is the fountain head, the quint essence of the essence. She is the best servant. Aradhika. That's why she is named Radhika. So Swamini Ji makes blissful Krishna experience even more bliss. There are only a few, very, very few people who even want to make Krishna happy. Outside of Braj, everyone seeks personal happiness. All the endeavors of the Braja Sundaris are simply meant to make Krishna happy. Though, and the greatest of them is Srimati Radharani Jai Jai Sri Rati. And that's why Krishna says in Chaitanya Charit Amrita again, there's a quote. Amavite anandita hoi tri bhuvana ama ke ananda dipe oiche konjana amavite yara hoi shatta shatta guna sejana aladite pare muramana amavite guni boto chakate ashambhava e kali rate te tahakori anubhava. All the three worlds are delighted by me. But is there any person who can delight me? (laughs) 
Only a person who is a hundred times more qualified than me can delight me or my mind. This is what Krishna says. So who, if anyhow interested in that, so who can give me delight? Only a person who is 100 times more qualified than me. And this is such a wonderful statement, because in this way Krishna actually is praising Radharani. He is praising her in such a wonderful way. Only a person who is 100 times, at least 100 times more qualified. Only this person And then he says, I only experience that in Radha. Jai Shri Radha. Sorry, Goranji. In which verse of Pila Kusmanji we are reading? Yeah. We are in verse number 59. Except that is Chirita. Kusmanjali 59. And which verse of Chitan Chiritamrita? This is the quote Ama hoite anandita hoitri bhuvana. It's starting. <laughs> Thanks so much. Although there are many loving devotees in Braj, Krishna became very eager to fathom the greatness of the foremost of them. Krishna becomes very eager. I want to know what kind of love Radharani has for me. I want to experience. We cannot know such a thing. It's not possible to understand. He's the most intelligent person, but he cannot understand. It's not possible. Even with the highest intelligence, you cannot understand that love. So it's not a question of intelligence. It is a question of experience. And that's why we are in Raga Bhakti. We are not interested in knowledge. We want to feel what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also felt, what he gave to the six Goswamis and what the six Goswamis gave or are still giving through Rupa and Raghunath, through the Guru Parampara to us. So Krishna is very eager to fathom the greatness of the foremost of Sri Radha. But it cannot be said that he was fully, that he has fully fathomed. So even after becoming Gora, we cannot say, yeah, now he got it. No, it's an ongoing process. It's a Nitya Leela. Nitya, always going on, even now 
and tomorrow and the day after in this material world, it's always there. It's a nitya lila. It's not in any way under the control of time. It's just everything under the control of Radha, even Krishna. And he is time. So time is under the control of this Lila. Even the Supreme Lord himself could not find the limits of this love. Even the Supreme Lord himself could not find the limits of this love. Now we can get some, some hint how great Radharani's love is. That even the Supreme Lord can not find the limits. What to speak of us? So Gora is going on gogging and relishing it forever. Hence, Gora Lila is also eternal. Sri Gora Sundara kept Radha's mood in the heart and showed the world that such a love can not be found anywhere else. We know in Gora Sundara there are different aspects. There's Radharani, there's the mood of Radha, there's the, the aura of Radha, the shining of Radha. It's a shining like a million times molten gold. It's captivating. Anyone who sees it once is captivated completely. Even animals are dancing in ecstasy when they see Gora Sundara. So many aspects of Radha, but there's also Krishna. And here is actually one point, which is from Krishna. Sri Gora Sundara kept Radha's mood in the heart and he showed the world that such a love cannot be found anywhere else. Not just that he wanted to feel that love, he also wanted to bring it out. Just look, this is Radha's love. Take it. He wanted to distribute it to us. And he did it. And still this distribution is there. So, if we can, we can take it. It's like a sail out. It's a sale out. You can have it this time so cheap. So take whatever you can get. And then she's saying, still I did not understand and I am deprived of this great gift once more. 
Sri Swaminichi is the embodiment of Brahma. And if I could surrender to her lotus feet, I would be fulfilled. Again, that's a very interesting point. Sri Swaminichi is the embodiment of Brahma. It's Brahma. It's there. It's here. It's the embodiment. And if I could surrender to her lotus feet, I would be fulfilled. Why? Because streams, endless streams of Brahma Rasa are coming from her lotus feet, like honey streams, like rivers of honey, emanating all the time. All the time, if I just would lay down to this lotus feet, the honey would actually take me with him, fulfill me, make me sweet. But I cannot do this in the material body. I need to bow down in my Sita Deha and stay at his feet. From the viewpoint of Tattva, it can also be understood that the Shakti Man the possessor of the energy is fully controlled by Shakti, the energy. Radha Purna Shakti Krishna Purna Shakti Man Dui Vastu Bheta Nahi Shastriyara Praman. Another quote of Chaitanya Charit Amrita. And it means Rata is the full energy and Krishna is the full possessor of that energy. There is no difference between the two that is proven by the scriptures. So if you want to share on any topic, please just interrupt and share. Otherwise, I will just go on and hope that you will be merciful with me and share your experiences and your feelings. So Rata is the full energy. It is like Radhakund. Radhakund is the source. And the flow from Radhakund is going into Shyamakund. So what would be Shyamakund if there would be no Radhakund? If you are the beholder of energy, but there is no energy, what you are? Useless? What you can do? You have a lamp, but you have no power. Will the lamp ever shine? Will it give light? No. You are the most sweetest person, but will you ever be able that this will shine out of you without the energy? Pure Brahma, Mahabhav, 
No. Some people say that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna. Would it be possible that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had such an impact on any person if Radharani wouldn't be with him? No. That's why it's written here. In any case, Krishna is fully, fully, not just a little bit, fully under the control of Sri Radha, which is the personification of complete love. So now we may understand Krishna is not complete, <laughs> but Radharani is complete love. She is complete love. How eager she is to serve Shyam Sundara. Although she has hundreds and thousands of sakis and mandaris, Ulasavati, blissful Radhika, personally serves him. Whatever she cooks tastes like nectar. He is written because of the boon bestowed upon her by Durvasa Muni, but we know this is just an outer fact. Because of her Mahabhav, what gives life? What gives life to Krishna? What can move him? Only Mahabha. And what can delight him fully? Radharani. Mahabha in person. Because all the Brachabhasis, they have Mahabha, but in different aspects. Only Radharani has full, full power. Mohanakya and Madanakya Mahabhav. Only she can delight him fully, perfectly. Because of her Mahabhav. And Srila Anandadas Babaji is, like always, so perfectly given an example. Why he is giving this example? <laughs> One day Mother Kirtita had invited Nanda and Yashoda with their family to enjoy the nectarian food cooked by Sri Radhika. After Mother Yashoda had enjoyed these dishes and after she had seen how much her Gopal liked to eat them, she said, From today on, my Krishna will not be happy by eating anything else but the dishes prepared by your daughter. 
So from that day on, Rishabhanu Nandini daily goes to Nandishwara, King Nanda's abode, to cook for Krishna with her sakis. So even Mother Yashoda understand, I mean, if you are a mother, you want to cook for your beloved yourself because you think, I will do the best, I will give all my love, I will take the best ingredients, I will do the best I can. But Mother Yashoda, she is giving that seva to Brishab Hanunandini. How is that? How it's possible? That means that she can feel that Radharani's love is even higher. Because her Gopal enjoys that food even more. So that's a wonderful example to show the power of Radharani. Who can cook better for Krishna than Yashoda? Only Radha. Because when Krishna eats that food, there are some special ingredients inside some special rasa Mother Yashoda cannot give. <laughs> and that shows the loving devotee is only happy when the object of his service is happy and he does not like to leave his duty to others. He does not like to leave his duty to others. But Mother Yashoda is giving it to Radharani. Wow! Usually, although she has hundreds of maidservants, she personally churns the curd for Krishna. And King Nanda personally milks the cows. Although there are hundreds of cowherd men who could do that. And in the same manner, Swamini stumbles her way out of ecstasy. Since she will personally cook for Krishna. Although she also has thousands of sakis and manjuris who could do that. Jai Jai Shirati. What wonderful quotes. And what wonderful explanations by Srila Ananda Das Babaji. And we can end this here with a song of Hari Pachila. He Swamini Vinodini Nandishware Yabetumi Nandhaloye Parama Anande Lalita Vishaka Saki Dui Pashve Shobadeki Charidi Keoto Shaki Brinde. O Swamini, O Vinodini, source of Krishna's pleasure. When you go to Nandishwara, the abode of Nanda, in topmost ecstasy, I see how beautiful you look when you are flanked by your best friends Lalita and Vishaka 
and surrounded by all your other girlfriends. We can have a picture of this walking to Nandishwara and we are with her and we will help her in the kitchen. Prepare something for her. Help her to cook for her beloved. What a wonderful scene, what a wonderful picture. And on the way, we take care because she's stumbling. We hold her, her thin waist. So the next quote of Chaitanya Chart Amrita, I found it's in verse number 60 to 61. And we, co we can go a little bit further. What Radharani will do after cooking, after meeting, how she is spending her day. What is her meditation? And how the mantra is serving her? To get through this time, she cannot see her beloved. So we will first go in the theme and then comes the quote. Yashoda is in ecstasy when she sees Rai and embraces her, taking her on her lap. She holds her face and kisses her while tears stream from her eyes. Radharani comes every day to cook for Krishna and Yashoda is completely in ecstasy when she sees Rai and embraces her, taking her on her lap. She holds her face 
and kisses her, while tears of stream, uh, streams of tears are coming from her eyes. When can we see Mother Yashoda like that? Usually only if her beloved child has come. So in this way we can see that the love for Radharani from Yashoda is of the same, of the same nature. Like that love to her son. It's such a heart melting scene. When Radharani comes to cook, Yashoda is first taking her in ecstasy inside, putting her on her lap like she would do with Krishna, holding her face, kissing her, streams of tears running. This Rasavati Rai then offers her obeisances to the lotus feet of Mother Yashoda and Rohini. Swamini is a bhakti lata or a wine of devotion. She bows down to Mother Yashoda's feet and Mother lifts her and holds her to her chest fondling her just as she would fondle her son by holding her chin and looking at her face, kissing her and smelling her head. It seems as if Swamini melts of mother's pure parental love. Breast at mother's breasts, Swamini says with tear-filled eyes and faltering voice, Ma, I am yours. Of course, in fact, all the gopis that are Krishna's pleasure potency the Prajavasis and everything else that exists belongs to Krishna. But just to make his pastime more exciting, his spiritual illusory potency Yoga Maya creates such situations for him, in which he becomes the paramour of other men's wives. A woman is not hard to attain unless she lives in another man's house, unless she is hard to get there, uh, unless she is hard to get. There will be no obstacles, and unless there are obstacles, there will be no astonishment in the blissful meeting of the loving pair. Although the gopis are actually not other men's wives, they appear to be like that, just to increase Krishna's pleasure and excitement. The marital status of the eternal perfect consorts of Sri Krishna is like a marriage of a dream. And Yoga Maya revealed that dream.
The married gopis sit in the houses of their husbands, spending the day simply weeping. And whenever there is some slight opportunity, there is a meeting with Krishna. How blissful is that meeting? Govinda greatly yearns for that kind of delectable happiness, which is the quintessence of transcendental flavors. And this is due to Yoga Maya's expertise. So when we hear about gopis, we usually think about one gopi, how she spends the day. Till she can go up to her moon tower, seeing Govinda coming back, completely covered with the dust of Brindavan, giving him some slight view from the corners of her eyes. So it seems like unfulfilled love in that moment, so much passion inside. I want to see him. I want to meet him. And this passionate love causes us to give up religious principles and to meet each other. Sometimes we meet. And sometimes we don't. That's up to fate. I will relish the quintessence of rasa. And in this way, I shall bless all the devotees. Dharma chatirag hedon he koro ye milan. Kabhu mile, kabhu na mile, dhaive raghadhan. Isha prasa niyasa kori bho ashvada, etvare kori bho sarva bhaktera prasada. Brajera ni mala raga shuni bhakta ghan, raga marge bhache yeno chodi dharma karan. Chaitanya Charit Amrita Adi Lila 4 This passionate love causes us to give up religious principles and to meet each other. We have to see that in the spiritual sky, everything actually is based on religious principles. So to give them up, <laughs> not so easy like here. <laughs> In this material world, it's more easy to give them up. <laughs> Everything is based on this structure there, so it's it's practically impossible to give them up. But they are giving him up. This passionate love causes us to give up religious principle and to meet each other. And it's so wonderful. Sometimes we meet, sometimes we don't. That's up to fate. 
what fate has to do in the spiritual sky. I will relish the quintessence of rasa, and in this way I shall bless all the devotees. And here is such a wonderful point for us. I will relish the quintessence of rasa, and in this way I shall bless all the devotees. So I will give this quintessence where I have to to, to come and to incarnate. I have to come to enjoy that, to be aware of that. But I will give this to all the devotees. I will bless them. I will give it for all the devotees. In what wonderful condition we are. Even Krishna cannot taste that seva of mandaris so easily. He has to endeavor a lot for that. And when they hear of the pure love of Braj, they will also worship me now comes a very interesting point. They will also worship me on the path of Raga Bhakti. On the path of Raga Bhakti. Not possible in another way. No Vaidhi Bhakti, Raga Bhakti. Giving up all social and religious principles. They will give up all social and religious principles. When they hear of the pure love of Braj, they will also worship me on the path of Raga Bhakti, giving up all social religious principles. Isn't that a wonderful point? This is the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is Sarva Dhamana Parijajamam Ekam Sharanam Braja. Give up all social and religious rules, regulations. Give up. Just throw yourself to the lotus feet of my one. Mam ekam, my one. Surrender. When they hear of the pure love of Braj, they will also worship me on the path of Raga Bhakti, giving up all social and religious principles. And now Shishukamuni describes the supreme astonishment of the extramarital love of the gopis in the Rasa Lila which is the ground jewel of all transcendental pastimes, as follows in Srimad Bhagavat 10, 36. Out of compassion for all the devotees, the Lord took shelter of a human form 
and performed such pastimes. Anyone who hears about this pastime will become devoted to him. So what a wonderful deep point. I have to read it again, I'm sorry. <laughs> this passionate love causes us to give up religious principles and to meet each other. They are living in the abode of religious principles, because this is the base, the base of Raj. On this base, the Lila is actually going on. So impossible to give it up, actually. But this is the Lila. Sometimes we meet, sometimes we don't. That's up to faith. I will relish the quint essence of rasa in this way. I shall bless all the devotees. When they hear of the pure love of Braj, they will also worship me on the path of Raga Bhakti, giving up all social and religious principles, like we did. We gave it up and they will also give it up. In this way, we can see this is the quint essence of all scriptures. And of course, also of Bhagavad Gita, Sarvadhamma, and Parijaja. Because all these principles are just there that we can develop. In the material world, dharma, then comes artha, then karma, then we want to have moksha, like this. So we have to give them up, dharma, give it up, social principles, give it up, dive into the love, into the purest love possible, just dive in. If you don't dive, I will take you and put you in. Drown you there. I will drown you there. Good if you want to be drowned. If not, I will anyway do. <laughs> Whoever has the slightest desire to come back home, I will drown immediately. This is the mercy, and this is the mercy of Radharani. Because Krishna could theoretically have done it before he was there. Incarnation of Krishna was there. What he did. Without the Shakti, without Mahabhav, not possible. So what wonderful gems 
are there in the scriptures. And Anandadas Babaji was actually putting them like uh, some person who is making this out of stones and gold, he's making this, uh, how do you say, schmuck, huh? necklaces, diamond necklaces. He's putting them together like this in such a wonderful way. And we can be so thankful to these great souls like Anandadas Babaji and also Gurudev that he was actually hinting us, look, look in the scriptures what is written there. See how wonderful, see how beautiful, how tasteful it is. These are the Rasika scriptures. And this is Rubanuga. So now the next quote. If you want to share something, please you are invited anytime. And it don't has to be very eloquent or, you know, it, whatever is from your heart, please share. The next quote I found from Chaitanya Charit Amrita is in verse number 62 of Shashivilap Kusumanjali. Now we are in the scene of cooking. We are in the kitchen. Sometimes Swamini checks whether the fire is burning well or not. Sometimes she lifts the lid from the cooking pot to see if the preparation is cooked. Sometimes she adds some spices and sometimes she steers the preparation with a spoon. While she does that, her tree-lined belly, breasts, arms and shoulders are moving along and cause her to shine constantly with matchless sweetness. Tulasi says, You are Rasavati an expert cook or a girl full of spiritual flavor. And now you blanch me into an ocean of bliss, filling up the whole kitchen with spiritual flavor also. What is so spiritually relishable in that kitchen then? Good question. It 
it's a wonderful scene where we can always remember when we prepare some food for our deities. We are together with Swamini in the kitchen now. And she's lighting up the fire with different kind of woods. And she's looking, sometimes taking the lid of a pot, looking inside if it's testing if it's already cooked through or not. Sometimes add some spices, like a normal kitchen scene, but with Swamini on your side. That's for the cooking. But what makes the cooking more delicious, actually, more spicy? The whole kitchen is already very spicy because of the sweetness of Radharani. She is there. She is in the kitchen. She is serving her beloved. That makes, of course, a wonderful, sweet and delicious atmosphere. But what makes it even more spicy, a little bit chilly inside maybe, we will hear Shyam Sundara finished his bath and had himself dressed. And now he sits down in his Bachan Kutir, in his meditation room, to repeat the name of Radha and to meditate on the Radha Mantra. His mother and father had initiated him into Narayan Mantra by Bhaguri Muni. For Gopal's own benefit, Mother Yashoda says, Go, Gopal, practice your mantra in your Bachan Kutiya. So Krishna sits down and thinks, hmm, Whose mantra shall I practice? Now comes the quote of Chaitanya Charit Amrita. Amahoite guni bodo chakata asambhava eka liradhate tahakori anubhava. Chaitanya Charit Amrita Adilila 4, 241. No one in the world can possibly be more qualified than me. I only experience that in Sri Radha. Therefore, he meditates on Sri Radha, his eternally beloved goddess. Sripat Prabodhananda Saraswati writes in Radharasa Sudhanidhi 96 with his eyes filled with tears of love. Lord Hari always repeats the two most tasteful syllables. Ra and meditates on the spiritual effulgence of her lotus feet like the king of yogis in a temple in a kuncha on the bank of the Yamuna. Saki, who told me this name Radha? Hearing it, I felt my heart was soothed. 
How much sweetness is there in that name? I filled my ears with nectar. How many names are in there in Gokula? None of them agitated me like this one. When her form manifests itself in my heart, it is as if I reside in an ocean of nectar. No other concert is so fortunate. Krishna can forget everything, but not her. This is the Lord we worship. That's a wonderful point. We are not worshipping Krishna, God. Not in Aishwarya. But we are also not worshipping that Krishna Yashoda is serving. This little Gopal. We serve Krishna who can not forget our goddess and his goddess of love, Radha, this Krishna we serve. Otherwise, we are not interested in this Krishna. We only serve him because we want to see that he is submissive to our Swamini. He is subdued by Swamini. He is rolling in the dust of her lotus feet. He wants her so much. That Krishna we serve. We don't serve the Krishna who is killing demons or doing other worldly duties which are performed by, by Vishnu. Because Vishnu performs these duties through Krishna's hands. Krishna kore Vishnu tvare asura samhare Chaitanya charit amrita. He is the carefree Dira Lalita hero, and this is such a ecstatic and wonderful and very interesting and very important point, most important point. He is the carefree Dira Lalita hero. That means he is not a king. He is a prince. He is completely carefree, enjoying in every kunja with Sri Rata, playing and playing. He infuses his prema in the trees and wines. He revives the old and dry trees, trees and causes the rocks to melt with his flute song. We will not see our worshipful Lord outside of his pastimes. That's the most important point. We 
because we tend to see Krishna again as God. Sometimes we may fall back in fear. In the Gambira, Sriman Mahaprabhu embraced Sri Swarup Damodar and Sri Ramananda Roy and wept. His heart that was burning in the fire of love and separation was soothed by the cooling nectar of suitable songs and verses from Krishna Kanamrita, Gita Govinda. Chandidas and Vijapati that were sung to were sung to him by Swarup and Ram Roy. Another quote of Chaitanya Chari Amrita Chandidas Vijapati Rayeranataka Giti Karnamrita Shri Gita Govinda Swarup Ramananda Sane Mahaprabhu Ratridhine Goyeshune Parama Ananda. Day and night, Mahaprabhu was most blissfully singing and hearing the song, the songs of Chandidas and Vijapati, the songs from Ramananda Roy's play, and the verses of Krishna Kanamrita and Sri Gita Govinda. Together, with Swarup Damodar and Ramananda Roy. Maharaj Prataparutra attained the Lord's mercy by reciting the verses of the Gopi Gita to him. The Lord relished this himself and also taught all the devotees of the world that Gopi Channa Balava, Sri Govinda, is our worshipful deity. And here is a wonderful point again, Gurudev explained us so many times the Kam Gayatri, Gopal Mantra. And here in the Gopal Mantra, there is this Gopi Channa Balava. And we meditate on Krishna like Gopi Channavallava. And we know to which Gopi he will come, with which Gopi he will meet. And we are meditating in this way. And this word taught by the persons who were very, very near, like Swarup Damodar, Ramananda Roy, and even Maharaj Pratra Parutra, who was a king, who was first, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't want to accept his, uh, uh, let me say, relationship with him. So it was thought to us also. But now we come back. Krishna is sitting in his Bhajankutiya. We remember what he is meditating on. While practicing his meditation in his Bhajankutiya, Krishna becomes very eager to see the object of that contemplation. So now comes the spice from the kitchen again. A little bit chilly maybe. So he goes to the kitchen. When he peeps through the kitchen window, he sees Srimati cooking there. Aha! Such 
sweetness. Krishna is enjoying the object of his meditation more close. First, he was speaking the mantra, the names of Radharani. But now he gets more eager. So he comes to the kitchen window and he peeks inside. He wants to see our Swamini cooking there. Because when she cooks, she does not have her veil on straight and her dress and ornaments are loosened because of the hard work in the kitchen. Her face shines with reddish glow because of the nearby burning fire and her cheeks are purified by pearl-like sweat drops. Sham cannot move his feet anymore as he beholds the object of his meditation. His eyes are widened of ecstasy from seeing her. Padopadam Nachalatastava Padamula Tadamula. This is the condition of Sham. He cannot move. He is in ecstasy. He is stiff. Open eyes. His eyes are widened of ecstasy from seeing her. Suddenly, Swamini sees Shyam, and out of shyness, she cannot pull the veil on her head straight, and she gives a wink to Tulasi to pull her veil back over the head. Then she chastises to Lassie with a blink from her eyes. To Lassie, didn't you see him? Why didn't you tell me he's watching me? To Lassie replies with her eyes, I also didn't see him. I was absorbed in grinding, grinding paste. Actually, Tulasi had seen Krishna before, but our hero had silently requested her not to tell Swamini that he was watching her. Radhika and Shyam's eyes meet, and with her glances, Swamini lets Krishna know, Mahurohini is here, go now. Krishna asks with his eyes, Will I not see you anymore? Swamini blinks, yes. So that is the spice added in the kitchen.
In this way, we can understand that this mood is also in the dishes. They just saw, they just saw a little bit of each other. The fire is burning, not only in the stove. The fire to meet each other is burning in their heart. And this rati is in the spices, in the cooking, in the cooked dishes. So when Krishna later on will eat them, he will definitely have some topic of meditation. He will eat the rati of Swamini. What a wonderful dish. What wonderful dishes. And this is the real taste he wants. Rade 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 La Bangalatika. How are you? Oh, very well, thank you. Warm summer on island. <laughs> thank you for your nice setting. Yeah. I want to say that I have some expression that also in this villa is some some Vipralamba. It's also one 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 second phase because she look at him, but it's not possible to be with him. It's also one another taste in the meal, I think so. <laughs> That's what I feel now. What do you yes. think? Yes. This is actually even up to Mohanakya Mahabhav which is the highest ecstasy when she cannot meet with Krishna. And Madhanakya Mahabhav is the highest ecstasy when she meets Krishna. And this is actually what we get by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Vipralamba. So actually, we can understand what kind of taste is in this dishes. Highest, highest possible spices are inside. Best spices. <laughs> Otherwise, if Radharani would not cook like this, what would be when Krishna is eating together with Balaram and the others? He would just have some rasic dishes, but not all. It would, would, wouldn't be complete. He would miss something. And Radharani could never accept that. Her beloved missing something? No. And there's this connection. Here it's written. Just a moment where it starts here. 
Yes. Srimati enters the dining room. Her head lowered out of shyness. Balaram and Mother Yashoda are there after all. That's why she lowered the head of shyness. Srimati blushes out of shyness and she tries to make her bangles and ankle belts jingle as softly as possible while she brings the full dishes in and takes the empty dishes back out again. Her pace is as nectarian as the dishes that she brings in. How carefully she carries Shyam Sundara's dishes. Rasa Sanchaya means she serves rasa, spiritual flavors. The dishes of Sri Krishna, Subal, the Sakis and Mandaris taste of amorous love. And the dishes of Balaram, Rohini and Yashoda taste of fraternal and parental love. What a wonderful meal. So here we can see what he's eating. A Morris love he's eating. And the funny thing is sometimes he's doing that. He's not hungry because he didn't get an answer if he will meet Radharani later on. So he's nervous. He's not eating. And then there's some nice exchange. Madhu Mangal is saying, Ah, Ma, Krishna is not eating. He's not hungry. And then Mother Yashoda wants to give him some inspiration. And she's saying, You know, Radharani will not come again if you don't eat. And in this way, She's actually putting fire into the Rasik exchange without knowing what she's doing, what kind of Rasa she's giving fire to. So in this way, they are serving in such a wonderful way. And it's always so wonderful so choking, so amorous, so humorous. All together, it's just a wonderful scene. And in this scene, another quote of Chaitanya Charit Amrita, Adi Lila 4, 75 to 82, is here. It starts with Krishna Kanta Gana Deki Trividha Prakara. It's a long quote, so I will not read this, but we will read in English. There are three kinds of concerts of Krishna. Firstly, the goddess of fortune and the queens of Dwarak. The greatest concerts, though, are the Bracha Gopis. All these concerts emanate from Sri Radhika. All these concerts emanate from Sri Radhika. Just as all the Lord's dissensions emanate from Krishna, all the Lord's concerts emanate from Sri Radha, their original source. 
The goddesses of fortune emanate from her Vaibhav Vilas, and the queens belong to the Vaibhav Prakash group, meaning about the same. There are differences in the Bracha Gopis' forms and natures. They are the Palanx of Ratha, and they are the cause of transcendental flavors. Without the presence of many lovers, there can be no Rasika bliss. Therefore, there are many gopis who are helping Ratha and Krishna in their pastimes. In Braj, they have different moods and flavors, and they make Krishna relish the flavors of pastimes like the Rasa Lila. So we can see that everything is coming from Rata. So actually Rata is giving all kind of tastes. Directly the highest and indirectly the others. But she is the source of all of them. And this is also wonderful to know. Another explanation is possible, or Ma means beauty and Krishna is her Lord, Bhava, the abode of limitless beauty and sweetness. A flood awakens on the ocean of sweetness when Sri Raja is seen and Radhika's maidservants relish that sight. They nourish each other's beauty. That's why Sri Rata is addressed as Devi, the most beautiful and effulgent one. Jyotamana Parama Sundari. With some trick, Shyam Sundara is able to look at Swamini without being noticed by others. Swamini also blinks at Shyam's sweet face while she hands the blades to Mother Rohini, thinking, How beautiful is my Priyatama! After eating one sweet, Shamsundra says, Ma, this sweet is amazing. At that time, Mother Rohini is serving elsewhere, so Mother Yashoda says, Radhe, bring that sandesh here. Swamini brings it, and Mother Yashoda says, Come, give it to him. Just as Swamini shyly wants to put the sweet on Krishna's blade, Krishna stretches out his open hand to receive it from her. That is a sign of affection. And Srimati blushes out of shyness when he does that. How beautiful is her shyly blushing, blooming face at that time. Tulasi relishes this sweetness and greatly desires to see that blue-summing lotus face again. O Radhe, according to your own wish, you prepare Krishna's dishes, like sweet rice that can be chewed, sucked, licked, 
or trunk with your own hands and place them on jeweled plates. With tear-filled eyes, you hand these plates to Rohini Devi while singing Krishna's name at every step. Everyone's eyes will be pleased by seeing such a lot of delicious dishes and everyone's bodies will be startled by ecstasy. In this way, Onavagori, fresh golden beauty, I will fill up my eyes with the vision of your face that blooms, shines like millions of moons. Vilap Kusumanjali is the treasure of worship and the elixir of the minds of the Rasikas. Jai Jai Shri Radhe. So here we will end for today. That were some quotes again from Chaitanya Charit Amrita in the connection with Shri Shri Vilap Kusumanjali. And more or less it was all about the cooking and the Rasik exchange through the cooking. And it's so sweet, isn't it? It's such a wonderful meditation when we are going in the kitchen, we, sh we, we can remember that easily and try to be with Swamini very conscious in the kitchen help her to cook such rasika dishes for her beloved. Jai Jai Sri Radhe. Thanks so much Gauravani Ji for so sweet quotations, explanations. I really so much. Radhe. Thank you all so much. It was very sweet. Thank you so much. I'm really happy to hear it. Thank you so much oh, yeah. for taking part here. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't get this. Sorry. I said that we are all now hungry. Oh, yes, 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 we are all now very hungry. We need some Rasika dishes now, some Maha 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 Prasad we need. Yeah. Yes, the heart is very hungry now. Thank you so much for being here and giving your merciful uh, vibrations and <coughs> helping me that Gurudev's uh, expressions can come through that useless mouth here and in this way get more deep in these themes. Thank you very much and 